And hello, everybody, and welcome to another Radio Inc. Facebook Live interview. My name is Ed Ryan, the editor of Radio Inc. Magazine, and we're happy to bring you another one of our live interviews on Facebook. And let's get right to our co-host for the show every Tuesday and Thursday. There she is, live from Ohio, Deborah Perenni, the publisher of Radio Inc. Magazine. Deborah, how are things in Ohio? Getting much better. I have a huge announcement to make. I have a haircut planned for two or for next Saturday, the 23rd. Finally. Wow. So this, you this, this is, big. <laughs> this is you know, things are things are starting to slowly open up around here. So now do you have restaurants open in Ohio? Uh the restaurants open actually, I believe, today for outdoor dining, and then next week they can do limited seating indoor. So yeah, we're we're at uh, 25% and they have to be six feet apart if they have outside seating in Florida. And um, and they also extended like if you have a parking lot, you're allowed to put tables out in the parking lot without a permit. They close off some parking lots too to try and help the restaurants uh, gain a little more business because, you know, 25% isn't really a lot when the margin is so low for a restaurant. I read somewhere and I forget what city it could have been New York, but where they are talking about um, opening up or, or closing down some streets so that they can have foot traffic and more restaurant, you know, restaurants can move some of their tables outside that way along different streets. I, I forget the city, but that seems to be like a, a good idea, particularly this time of year when the weather's getting a little bit better. And I heard the gyms are opening in Ohio, although they still haven't opened in Florida. So that's uh, going to be a tough one, Ed. My son yeah. loves his gym too, but even he agrees as, and he's in Pennsylvania as much as he wants to go back. There's a little reticence there yeah, because of how close those treadmills and those machines right. are. And I'm just so glad I don't have to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So our topic today is how COVID-19 is changing how we sell. And of course, if you have any questions for our guests, you can type them in the chat box. And we appreciate everybody telling us where they're listening from. We have Fort Myers, Ohio, Roanoke, yeah, Virginia. Sure. I see one. I'm sorry, I've got to interrupt you, but from us, um, just a city north of, of Dayton, Troy, Ohio, Joe Le Labor, uh, Ohio and, Strong. So hi, Joe. And also from Portugal. So wow. uh, we're worldwide today, uh, Deborah. So let's that's bring in our, our. That's because of our guest. That's a worldwide famous guest from uh, Research Director Inc. is Charlie Sislin. Charlie, thanks so much uh, for uh, coming on and tell us uh, where you are and how the uh, quarantine is going there. All right. Thanks. First of all, thanks, uh, Ed and Deborah, for having me. Uh, I'm in Annapolis, Maryland, uh, kind of just outside Washington, D.C. We are still basically closed down. When we closed down, we didn't do it as severe as most other states, but uh, restaurants are still just takeout only and uh, a few recreational things such as boating are opened up, but everything else is still pretty closed. All right, so let's get right to the questions. Deborah, you get to lead it off today. Go right <laughs> ahead. Okay. Um, Charlie, first of all, could you give everyone a little bit of background as to what Research Director Inc. does, the type of services, so that the audience will, those that don't know, will get a better uh, understanding of what kind of um, focus we're going to take today? Absolutely. Uh, when I started in this business, most radio stations had in-house research directors. And as the industry and the business has changed, a lot have gotten rid of them. What we do is act as the in-house research director for stations, both on the sales side, which is what we're going to program talk about today, where we help salespeople put pitches together and analyze the data in a sales way, to helping program directors under program directors understanding the good, the bad, and the ugly of their radio station. Basically, we take any data a radio station has and put it in a usable a usable form for either their salespeople or their program director. And we've been doing it for about 25 years now. So how has that over this period that we've been going through, um, how has, uh, speaking of sales, that changed the direction of the information? Um, what's what's happened during? Well, uh, first of all, a lot has changed in the last 60 days. And I think if you look at sales and I kind of did this analogy for one of our clients yesterday, Looking at the data, all of a sudden the Nielsen data became less important because it was the business fell apart. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. 
in the middle of March, business disappeared. And we as salespeople had to go through the uh, seven uh, steps of grieving in about 36 hours. We had to take shock, denial, anger, fear, and depression, compact it, and then move forward. Things are starting. This is a great time for this seminar because things are starting to change. As markets open up, the data is now more important. Now, the May data, and we'll talk about this a little later, is coming out right now, or the April data, excuse me, is right. coming out right now in the PPM markets. But we have seen over the short term and long term, while Nielsen is important and Nielsen is our currency and our pricing model, and there are good sales stories, we see more and more important on other data sources, whether there's qualitative like Scarborough or Media Audit, or just studies to help salespeople be the experts and informative so they can help the advertisers do the very best. Because every dollar now for those advertisers is more important than ever before. So they've got a, a salespeople have to be armed with data and be able to put it in a usable form for the advertiser, whether it's the you know, Madison Avenue media buyer or the local restaurant, be able to interpret the data, understand it, and use it so they get the most bang for their buck. So, Charlie, you mentioned the, you're helping salespeople with uh, pitches. What's, what's in a pitch these days? Uh, <laughs> nowadays, a lot of it is, well, let's go back. We did a seminar for the industry in middle of, to late of March. And it was why you need to advertise. And, you know, everybody now has heard about the stories of Procter and Gamble and Kellogg's and General Motors and how they advertise to keep their brand going during the downturn. Well, we're still in the downturn and many advertisers continue to advertise. So you have to, first of all, one piece of data is talk about history, the importance of advertising and the importance of maintaining your brand. Because like a radio station, advertisers got to maintain that brand. If they lose that brand, then it's gonna, they're going to lose market share when the industry comes back. But more, just as important, utilizing all the resources to talk about why radio is important right now. And let's forget about the station for a second. We need to make sure that the misconceptions, and that there's a lot of data out there, the misconception is that radio listening has gone away and is now down to zero. Absolutely not true. But even last week, Nielsen uh, in their April call did a study that showed that people who are more focused on getting back to norm normal and willing to go out there and right now and spend are heavy radio listeners. Well, that's a great story when you're going to that restaurant that's finally got to open up or that car dealer that's got to open up and say, look, you need to reach people who are ready to make the transition back to, quote, normalcy. And these are heavy radio listeners. So we've got to continue to promote our medium. And then you promote your radio station with innovative ideas. But it's both quantitative, qualitative and outside sources. The data is critical in telling the story. And you got to focus on the right categories. You know, uh, Charlie, we had had a couple people on this uh, recently. Colin Kinsella was one of them. And um, one of the things we discussed, and obviously he's with he's the head of a major national agency, Habas Media. And but we discussed the fact that and got down to what radio has done during this crisis and how invaluable it has proven itself to be to a lot of clientele. Um, these are not numbers. These are stories. How do we take these stories and shall I say, turn that into currency? Well, I think, I think one of the things radio has always done well, and let's talk about how they've helped advertisers, but also how they've helped communities. Uh, we are sending out regular notifications to our clients just with articles from Radio Inc. and other places on what radio stations are doing to help their community. And if you look at the food drives and the amount of money that individual radio stations have driven. Now, what does that mean? That means that radio stations are part of the community. 
And unlike, and I'll beat them up, beat up on them a little, Pandora and Spotify, which are music machines, radio stations have to be part of the community and work with the community to, as a local food bank or raising money for the shelters or whatever is needed or blood drives, whatever is needed in the community, because all of a sudden the data doesn't matter there. What matters is that the rate, the advertisers can latch onto the event and be part of it and give goodwill to the community. There was just an article today on uh, good karma in Chicago was having a contest to give away advertising. And guess what? They had one of the local banks sponsoring it. So all of a sudden they were doing a community service, basically giving their inventory to one advertiser, but they got other advertisers to come in and sponsor it to pay for it. Again, radio is part of the community. And again, I'm the data guy, but I still believe that radio is part of the community is critical to to getting advertisers, especially in this day and age. I talk a lot about empathy and how the radio salesperson has to be have empathy for the advertiser, especially the direct advertisers, but that will come back and advertisers have to have empathy for the community. And working together without the data, you can sit there and become part of the community that a lot of other outlets, advertising outlets can't do. Yeah, Charlie, that uh, promotion you're talking about uh, was a $50,000 ad campaign that they're uh, running on their website that businesses go on and uh, and register for it. And I thought that was a great idea because there's they're, now they're getting other information on all the advertisers, even though there's only going to be one winner, they'll have all the information on the other advertisers. So we do have that on our website uh, from the headlines this morning. Charlie, do you think that um, the campaigns that advertisers run forward are always going to have to include some kind of safety message about their business in the copy and the creative? Well, always is a long time away, but I think right now, and I think uh, Gordon Burrell did a webinar uh, fairly recently where he talked about the transition of advertising messages. And the first one is we're open because let's remember when this thing first started, a lot of places, even restaurants were closed down. So first announcing you're open, but then the advertising message is we're COVID-19 safe. Yeah. And you see that, I think the first one I saw was one of the out national pizza chains, Domino's, I think it was, or one of them was advertising, sorry, I can't remember, was advertising that after the pizza comes out of the oven, it's hands-free. So it's a great message. And I think, whatever advertisers are coming on as the markets open up, there is a sense of the po portion of the population. I'm one of them. That's very wary about going anywhere right now. So please assure me that I am, that you are COVID-19 safe. The final part of this is then people are going to want discounts and pricing will become a mat a issue. So at first we're open, we're safe, and then we've got a great deal for you. And that's the transition that we see about to happen. But all that time, you've got to continue to build that brand. Let's take that to the sales bullpen um, and, and the sellers approaching the businesses with these steps. What's their approach? Well, it all depends on the, the advertiser. But I think the first of all is to walk in with the facts. I mean, Nielsen's put out some good stuff. Burrell's put out some good stuff. Uh, uh, Coleman's put out some good things. Walk them with the facts. Don't just sit there and say, hey, this is what you got to do. Hey, this is what the experts tell you to do, especially when you're dealing with that retailer. And then understand where that retailer has been over the last 60 days. Have they been closed? Have they not been advertising? Or have they maintained their message and their brand? But walking in with some facts and figures to talk about what's going on and show them empathy, show that you care is critical. Okay. And, and then from that point, as far as packaging, pricing, are we going to have any problems here? Because, you know, a lot of times we are very eager to get back into the game. And sometimes we don't think ourselves to the next phase. Absolutely. Uh, pricing is a massive issue right now. I still tell the story of uh, 
when New York was still open up or whatever market was, was still open and it was just starting to start. I called one of my client market managers and I said, are you working at the office or at home? And his line was, I can take cancellations at home as easily as I can in the office. But we are in a supply and demand industry and it's not radio supply, it's advertising supply. So right now there's a lot of supply. So pricing is going to be a problem. Therefore, you've got to show value. But when a competitor is coming in at a fraction of your price, it's, it's tough. So you've got to show your benefits and you've got to show it all well. Now, there's also a lot of categories that radio has not excelled in that are right now really ripe for the picking. The legal issues are our, our lawyers are all over the place. Healthcare is massive right now. We just did a, uh, we're doing pitches for our clients on mental health and healthcare because these are issues that 60 days ago, especially mental health, was not a big advertiser, was not a big issue. But with what's going on now, you if you pick the right categories, they're incredible. The other one, which I find interesting to go with mental health that seems to be exploding is alcohol and sales <laughs> of alcohol. Yeah. I mean, the bars and restaurants may not be open, but the liquor stores are and how, and having your sales team going after the right accounts and going after the right advertisers. And then again, I, I said it once before, were they advertising before? If they drop their advertising, you've got to convince them that they've got to rebrand themselves. Act like it's a grand opening. Now, that's kind of tough to do uh, with uh, promotions, which many radio stations live on. But you've got to change your promotions. Have a virtual show or something and get these new advertisers to come in, try radio, build a package that will work for them and make them a repeat business. I'm going to ask both of you guys this question, because Ed, you cover a lot of it, and obviously you work with a lot of it. Um, before we get into the ratings, which I, I know we want to get into to the books and uh, the recent um, ratings, but we talk about these virtual events. How do you convince an advertiser that they're getting the bang for the bucks with virtual events? That always seems to be a stumbling block, unless you give them a tremendous discount on something like that. But how do you show value for that? Well, I, th I think what you've got to do is you've got to do the follow up. I mean, if you have an event at a car dealer, which we used to do, and they see the people walking in the store and they see people reacting, they know if, if the promotion worked or not. Well, if you're doing a web based meeting and you're or a web based event, and giving away things and dealing with the car dealers and all of that, you can measure your traffic and you can go to them and show, hey, look, this is how many people attended this event. And you know, one of the things you can do with a web-based event that you can't do maybe online is product placement. Hell, if you're doing trying to help a car dealer, do it outside with the car right there. But there's lots of things you can do to prove to the advertiser that people came in and did and did this. The other thing I want to bring up, and I want to really stress this, is sales styles have changed drastically. And this goes a little bit off base, but it kind of goes with it. We all grew up selling a certain way. Now, I've been fortunate that I jumped on because I travel a lot for what I do. I've been doing web-based meetings for, oh, about 15 years now. And one thing I learned right away was you can't do a web-based meeting the way you do the face-to-face -face call, the way you do the telephone call, the way you do the pitch. We all learned as salespeople, because I started out as a radio station sales guy, we all learned how to make that cold call. We trained and practiced. We trained and practiced on how to make that phone call, how to close the deal. Well, you got to do the same thing. If you're going to transition, and I believe – Many salespeople are going to have to succeed. If they want to succeed, they're going to have to transfer to doing web-based meetings. Well, they better learn how to do them right and how to do them professionally. And there's a lot of little nuances. Get on there five minutes before the other person does. 
have your opening screen ready, you know, make sure there's no outside disturbances, all those little things. So when you do your pitch, and one great thing about doing a web-based pitch as opposed to a live pitch, the advertiser can't go to the last page and see what the what the price is. <laughs> they have to listen to the pitch. I look, I will not I, one of my personal things, I never send anybody a proposal until they've seen the pitch. First of all, our service is very unique. But when people call me up and said, How much is it? I gotta say, Well, you know what? I gotta show you what we do so we can figure out what's right for you. Well, learn I my number one recommendation for salespeople is learn whether it is Zoom, go to meeting, hangout, any of those services. Learn it backwards and forwards because act like that meeting, that web-based meeting and that presentation is your one chance to impress the advertiser. And it's a great time to walk them through a deck, show them what the station is all about, even have you know some video in there of past items, but build a professional deck that works well over the web. And all of a sudden, instead of making three phone three calls a day, because you get you're not driving between them, you can make six or seven. And you can convince advertisers that you're on top of it with the resources, the data, and the ideas to help them drive their business. So Charlie, uh, uh you wanted to talk about the numbers, so let's uh, let's. Uh, the question I have to start off before we get to Steve's question is, um, what is the truth about listening levels over the last few weeks, <laughs> six weeks, uh, seven weeks? Tell us the truth. Whether uh, radio listening is stable or up or down. Well, okay. Let, let's first remember what we're looking at and what we have done in coordination with Cornerstone Research, which are the guys who do X Trends, is for our clients. We've sent them a deep, our clients and their clients sent them a detailed breakout of what the news is. Overall, the March report, let's remember if the typical market closed, market closed down around uh, March 11th, March 12th. The March survey was half pre COVID, half non pre COVID or post COVID after the shutdown. We saw a small decline in radio listening at that time. The April book is coming out. Today is the second day of the PPM. And we're talking about the PPM markets. We have seen a pretty significant decline in radio listening. Plain and simple, as people's lifestyles have changed, we have seen a decline in both cumes and time spent listening across most demos. And honestly, morning drive has been hit more than other day parts. Here's the good news about this whole thing. Markets are opening up now. We, this book, and Nielsen's done a very good job about this. This book reflects a government national shutdown. As markets like Ohio and Florida and uh, Tennessee or whatever open up, this book is not a reflection of radio listening. People are back in their cars commuting. People are at their offices. They're starting to open up. As they start to open up, the April book is not indicative of what's going on in radio listening. And I think that has to be an important element. Now, on the flip side, many advertisers sit there and say, well, people aren't in their car. Nobody's listening to radio. Well, we're all used to talking about 90% of all people listen to radio every week. Well, now the number is 70%. But still, with the change in lifestyle, still, and again, that's a rough number, but weekly radio's got a weekly cum of about 70%. Still pretty powerful. But this data, and Nielsen has got the in their ebook and in all their notifications, they're sitting there saying, once things open up, surveying or the sample during the COVID-19 shutdown is not a real reflection because things have changed. So, Charlie, do you attribute that all to uh, the the people not driving or to something? Uh, was radio prepared to transfer from the car to the smart speaker to pick up some of that or not? Well, I think we, in the study that we did for our clients, we looked at both home and away from home, even day by day. And again, generalization, because 48 markets all acted differently. At home listening 
did not rise as much as we had hoped. And I'll talk about that in a second. Away from home listening dropped drastically because all I look, all you got to do is drive out on the road and you see that there are fewer cars on the road and fewer people in the office. Remember in PPM, you can only judge at home and away from home. Now, radio, it's an interesting in a PPM world because the smart speaker is a real tricky animal. You have radio stations that are doing total line reporting. Little side note, I am a big fan of total line reporting. That means whatever is played on the comes out of the tower and the terrestrial signal also comes out of the smart speaker and also goes through the mobile phone. Identical, including the ads. Others see a monetary uh, opportunity for their stream. So they split their signal. Now, if that split signal has an encoder on it and it's played through a smart speaker, it's picked up. But there are a lot of digital signals, a lot of radio stations whose streams are not being are not alive. There are some di radio stations whose digital signals are not being encoded. The other issue, which has uh, always been an issue for me with uh, PPM, are are headphones and now uh, earbuds. And if you go with the old phrase, if the uh, if the ears can hear it, the meter picks it up. Well, that's not true because it's not going through the wave. Uh, the other thing that's going on, and the reason I like TLR so much, is radio has done it is doing a better job with their streamed audio than they did a year ago or two years ago. But the user experience, in my mind, and I've got my smart speaker right here, and I'm listening to radio stations, the user experience isn't quite as good when you're not TLR. There are multiple ads heard at the same time. Uh, there's a lot of dead air, things like that. It's getting better, but it isn't quite there yet, and the user experience isn't quite there. However, what people tell us is their logs are showing a massive jump in stream audio. So that's a great opportunity for radio because people are learning how to use their smart speakers, so we better be prepared for it. Before before you take this question, I just want to, uh, uh, while we're still on that point and everything like that, so we're hearing a lot about the listening on smart speakers and how that is, you know, that's a positive. But if we don't get total line reporting, for example, are we getting really all the credit for it? And could that be part of the reason why the listening levels are down? Well, there again, there's two things. If you're absolutely right, if they're not encoding, the, the listening is incurring, but it's not being picked up by any meters. And that could be part of it. We can't quantify that. And I'm a facts-based guy. But if if they are encoded and it's not and it's being listened to through speakers and you're carrying your meter, and that I want to bring that up too, uh, it's it's going to the bottom line. The station may not be getting it because it may not be uh, enough to make minimum reporting standards, but it is going to total line report, total listening. The other thing that we were, I was personally very interested in looking at was the Nielsen sample. I truly believed that as people's lifestyles changed, mm -hmm. when, you know, you've gotten into your habit of showering, picking up your meter, putting it in your pocket and going and going to work all of a sudden when, well, maybe you don't shower in the morning and maybe you're, you're leisure that you're not going to carry your meter. The good news is we've seen across the board, and I think Nielsen's done a very good job of this, what we've seen across the board is in tab, number of people carrying a meter in an average day, in March was well within the range. Every market was well within the normal range. What we're seeing in April, and I have a theory about this, what we're seeing in April is in tab is actually up. More people are carrying their meters in April than they have over the past year in an average, in many markets. Two issues. I think Nielsen's done a good job of reminding their meter keepers to carry the meter. And remember, the more people you have carrying the meter, the more reliable your data. But the other part, and I think this is it, a little sad, but it's true, and everyone seems to agree, is Nielsen compensates people for carrying their meters. All of a sudden, that amount of money, which may not have really mattered 60, 90, 120 days ago, matters greatly. So people are much more diligent about carrying their meter because you get paid. You don't get paid 
by how much radio listening you do. You get paid by how much your meters move in an average day. So there are people are being very diligent about keeping their meters. Let's go to the questions, Charlie. Uh, this is from Steve Allen. Who uh, his picture is at the White House right there? But he says, uh, "How will the release of the April PPM survey impact future sales?" Well, it all depends. I think, and I kind of mentioned this already. Nielsen has already set the rules or set the suggestions, I should say. Let's remember the April survey. All 28 days of the April PPM survey, things were shut down. Commerce was not occurring nearly at its normal level. Advertisers are going to use that data to try to beat us up. But in reality, and Nielsen has talked about this, is now that things are opening up, that April data is not reflective of true radio listening. Because market, because the roads are going to start to get more crowded. The gyms are going to start to be crowded. Uh, restaurants, everybody's going to be out and about. There's going to be some pent up demand. So if I was a sales rep, I would have that page from the Nielsen ebook, which is, God, I, I want to say page 31. I'm going from memory. Wow. But I, because I've been sending it to my clients because the advertiser will sit there and say, hey, your number, you're going from a 0.4 to a 0.2 rating. So I want a half rate. But hold it. My market just opened up. And this was when the market, this was a reflection of radio listening when the markets were closed. It would be like beating up a radio station, an adult contemporary radio station that's not playing Christmas music over the holiday book in February. Christmas music's over. We Go back. If anything, I would use a January, February, March, three book average. Two weeks of that has got COVID-19 in it, but out of 12 weeks, and then you're getting a true reflection of what's going on in the market. The April book, once places open up, is not a relevant sales tool. I wonder if it's even going to matter because sales are down so much. I mean, it, you, it's just naturally going to go off when things start to open up because advertisers weren't spending anything. Will it really even matter? Will the numbers really even matter that much? When, well, it gets, when down to back the tool. it gets back to the pricing tool. When the advertiser who is the, and again, let's, not beat them up too much, but the media buyer who sits there and says, your market's a $200 cost per point. You used to have a 0.4, you now got a 0.2, you got to price off of that. No, I don't have to price off that because that is not a reflection of what's going on. Let's look at where I was January, February, and March and use those numbers because let's remember, one of the things that Nielsen is important in the sales arena is a pricing tool. And if you use the April book, it's not a proper reflection to price the radio stations. Let's uh, go to Scott's question. Charlie, uh, what have you noticed about QM across the board through this season? Well, the QMs in, in the, uh, and I'm just talking about the whole market. What we saw originally in the March book, and again, it was 50-50, QMs held. In the April book, in the market, we're seeing QMs go down. And I'm saying, ballpark between 65 and 75 percent for the market. Well, if the cumes are down, what we've seen is cumes across most radio stations are down. The theory behind that is, and again, we've looked at a bunch of stations, is P1 cume is held. People's favorite radio station they're still tuning to. It's that P3, that P4, that tertiary listening that maybe they were impugned in because they were at a store or a restaurant that was playing the radio station, or maybe they didn't like what their station was playing and the number two station was playing. But when they went to that number three station, they're no longer doing that. The, the, the secondary tertiary stations were hurt. The other place, which is uh, almost a no brainer, but the one format and type of type of format that we've seen cumes hold and even grow is news and information. NPRs had some good books. Uh, some of the conservative talk stations have, have seen their time spent listening go through the roof and the all news is because people want to know what's going on and they're going to radio to get that kind of information. Well, did we miss anything, uh, Deborah? Did we miss anything, Charlie? We're, uh, I can't believe how fast the time has flown by. No, um, just any 
closing thoughts, Charlie, as to maybe how this has altered, uh, besides the, the idea of more web-based um, presentations and things like that, but the sales process um, and the information um, and what's important? Well, I, I, I think I'm going to go back to the basics. Know your advertiser. Know what your advertiser needs. And the more information you can walk in and be the expert to the advertiser. And again, most radio stations have some sort of qualitative in, in, in place or have some sort of survey. Walk in and know. I mean, there are so many people vying for these guys' dollars. And if you go in and act as a partner and a consultant and also bring in your digital elements, that all of a sudden you're not seen as a vendor but as a partner. And the idea that you can utilize data, and if you're not, if, you, if you're having trouble analyzing data, somebody at the radio station or somebody can help you do it, but be, do it in a professional manner to walk in and let's say, I'm here to help you. I'm not from the government, but I'm here to help you. <laughs> but let me tell you what's going on right now. Let me tell you how business is changing, what your competitors are doing how people are utilizing radio and how people are utilizing my radio station to be successful. Be there as a consultant. And again, this is a great opportunity for us to make that transition and get more powerful that way. Do we have time for one final question, Ed? I see. Throw uh, one up here from Mary. Uh, do you have any general data on how much radio listening is online now and has this changed since mid-March? Well, uh, Again, because of the way uh, the surveys are done, it's very difficult to judge that because I, I personally don't know how many stations are not encoding their stream. But talking to our clients, they are the minute things close down and minute people are working away from home, their, their computer logs and their amount of streaming went way up. We're also seeing more streamed audio stations that are not TLR showing up in the book, not a lot, but a few more. But absolutely, the streamed audio is a growing factor. And if you're TLR, you're getting credit for it in the uh, numbers. If you're not TLR, you're, you've got to make a concerted effort to sell it, sell it. But again, the important thing I need to say, and again, this is more sales oriented, but to program directors, focus on your streamed audio. Make sure your stream sounds every bit, every bit as good as your terrestrial signal, because if people come into your streamed audio, they may love your station, but if the user experience is not good, they will go somewhere else. And it's even easier with digital than with the regular terrestrial signal. Seems like everybody's waking up in the second half of the show here. Uh, Mike says, can you talk briefly about the diary system versus PPM during COVID? Uh, diaries, it's interesting because one of the things we've noticed in the diary world, and again, I've been doing this for 40 years now. Uh, one of the things we've noticed in diary, and it, it's always funny when a station changes format and changes call letters and changes slogan, in the diary, for next 30, 60, 90 days, people will still be writing down the old call letters and the old format and the old thing. We don't know. Diary is much more of a habit and it's what you know. So it's been much more difficult to judge how the diary world has been changing. Uh, and again, we're seeing a lot of change. We're only looking at a few diary markets, but we're not seeing the drastic changes because, uh, you know, diary, the PPM is picking up what people are exposed to. The diary is a survey of what do, what do you remember you listen to? And people do a pretty good job of keeping the diary, but it's not, it's not as interactive as impactful. I mean, the day a market shut down, we could see in PPM the day it shut down. In the diary, there's that lack, so it's a lot harder to judge what's going on. Charlie, how can people get in touch with you? Uh our website is researchdirectorinc.com, and the email is csislen, C-S-I-S-L-E-N, at researchdirectorinc.com. And uh, if you have any questions or just want to talk about what's going on in the radio industry, we'd love to hear from you. 
Uh, there's also info at Research Director Inc. if you just want to put out a general question. And he does write columns for us every two weeks at RadioInc.com. They come out uh, every other Monday. And the next one, just for because it because of this, the next one is entitled "There's Light at the End of the Tunnel." And I think if I can leave with on that phrase, that's the most important thing. We, as an industry and as a society, have gone through a very probably the most difficult time of our lives. But right now, as things are opening up, it's a great opportunity. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Now we got to seize it and be ready for it and take it on. Ed, Deborah, thank you very much for allowing me to do this. Thank you, Charlie. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Have a great day. Take care. Everybody stay safe. Same Charlie change. Sislin from Research Director Inc. Deborah, very nice uh, crowd today. Good questions. And uh, we have another one planned for Thursday at 11 o'clock with? With Pierre Bouvard, uh, the Chief Insight Officer of Westwood One and Cumulus. I think everybody knows Pierre as well. Um, he's certainly a data-driven kind of guy and is going to talk about how we're going to help advertisers um, get back into business again. Great, great. And uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in today. And for anyone that's interested, the, the software that we're using is StreamYard. And if anyone has any questions or uh, want to, any tips on how we use it or why we use it, you can contact me anytime. We use it a lot for a lot of different things. And it's Ed Ryan, the editor at gmail.com. And we love it. And you don't have to download any clunky hardware to your computer or anything like that or any software. Um, it's just a, a click and you're in. And uh, sometimes the camera is bright and sometimes it gets brighter. <laughs> What happens here is this, you know, we're getting close to noon and isn't noon when the sun is at its brightest. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm saying it just seems like it. I've, I've lightened up over that time. So yes. And uh, we'll expect a full report when you get your hair done next Saturday. And uh, that's all good news for you guys in Ohio. Yep. Thank you so much, Ed. Great job. All right. Talk to you soon, everybody. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you.